Tune in to, to, to the Diva Hot. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in today. Our guest is Bob Thompson. He's a motivational speaker and a real estate agent. Thank you, Bob, for joining us. How are you? I am good. Thanks for having me today. No problem. So can you explain why being born born on, I guess it's the 13th in 1972, why it was so significant and important? Well, because I was born on Friday the 13th in 1972, <laughs> so I'm old. Um, <laughs> what's, con what's considered for a lot of people, you know, Friday the 13th being a bad luck day, according to my mother, okay. uh, was not a bad luck day. Now, my brother may feel differently because... He's he was born October 15th and is almost exactly three years to the day older than I am. Okay. And quite honestly, when I was born, they were like, look, it's your birthday present. And he looked at my dad and was like, I wanted a truck. And, you know, we've been getting along well ever since. <laughs> <laughs> so I read in your bio that you had overcame some health issues. Um, if you can share how that had changed your perspective on life and just made you want to become, I guess that's when you became a motivational speaker. Yeah, that's really what kind of happened is in 2018, I had my first heart attack mm -hmm. and then I had my second heart attack, believe it or not, the day or the night of my birthday that year. Okay. And at that point, I went back into the hospital and I had to have a quadruple bypass. And needless to say, you know, my life has changed quite a lot since then. The other thing that happened from that is I started mentoring real estate agents because I kind of felt like, okay, I needed to give back. I had been doing real estate a long time, been a top agent. I had been asked to run teams and mentor teams and quite honestly, just really didn't want to deal with it. So I didn't do it. Mm -hmm. And that kind of started the process of coaching and mentoring real estate agents, which has since shifted into motivational speaking and coaching on other levels. And to be quite honest, in the back of my mind, it's always something that I wanted to do. I was a huge fan of Les Brown growing up and I enjoy his work. So mm -hmm. I kind of, it was something I had on the shelf, just kind of sitting there. And once you come face to face with the fact that, okay, I may die, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and you survive several, several incidents, you kind of just, okay, well, I have to jump on this now because if I don't, I'm going to miss my window and you never want to do that. You only go around this world one time, as far as I can tell. Right. And so when you decided to be um, a coach for the real, real estate agents, um, what were some of the key points that you wanted to make sure that they understood as as being from the field and have so many years experience? I think for me, a, a lot of what I talk about is persistent progress and self checks, which is let's keep an eye on things. And we set our own goals mm -hmm. so we cannot compare ourselves with everybody else. And it's important in real estate, especially when you're moving along and you feel like everybody else is getting more stuff done than you are. So if you're on a team or you're in the office and, you know, you're going to have a few rock star agents that are already there and they're doing their thing, you can't compare yourself to that. You've got to build your own path and focus on the small goals, which may be, OK, I'm going to make X amount of phone calls and I'm going to try to close, let's say, one deal a month. And then the following year, I'm going to shoot up to two deals a month or just, you know, you got to almost set your own path and not really compare yourself because everybody is different. And some people, quite honestly, whether we like it or not, may have a an advantage to some extent. They may already know the right people or they may have been dropped into a situation to where they've got folks coming to them you know, right off the bat because of who they are, or who they know. And right. it takes time to build up that sort of business and clientele. And so with I, I read in your bio, where you have over 15 years as a top um, level real estate agent in the Hamptons Road. What were some of the strategies and insight that contribute to your success in real estate? Honestly, the biggest and here's the biggest one. And this is what I tell everybody. And I take it with me. In 2008, I, I went full-time in 2007, and then I switched companies in 2008. I was with a new broker, new team. Mm -hmm. Now, this gentleman owned the, owned the team. It was his name on the door the whole nine yards. And I'm a hardhead. So I'm arguing with him on a house that I had listed that I could not sell. It was overpriced. And I'm arguing with him. And he looks at me and he goes, how many houses have you sold? And I kind of thought about it and kind of stuttered and fluttered because let's be honest, I hadn't really accomplished a whole lot. 
And he was like, I am the expert. Why are you arguing with me? And for whatever reason, the light from the mountaintop came down. I don't know what you want to call it. Like I just shut my mouth and listened. And that piece of advice made all of the difference in the world. And I used that across the board. Again, like, I don't know what's wrong with my car. I'm not an auto mechanic. So I'm going to shut my mouth and listen to my auto mechanic. Now, I may go get a second opinion, Mm -hmm. certainly. But when we have people in our lives that know better, listen to them. There's a reason they are where they are and you're not. And I'm, and that, and I, I, I don't, I can't explain it. Like for whatever reason it clicked and I was like, Oh, good Lord. He's right. I mean, the dude runs his own team. I'm on his team. Why am I, why am I going to argue with the man that clearly has been way more successful than I have? So that's what I kind of stress with the, with young people is that whether you like it or not, Listen to folks that know better. Again, you can always get a second opinion, and that's important. But at the same time, I'm not going to argue with my doctor if he tells me I got something wrong with him. I may go see another doctor, but still, you've got to be willing to understand that whether we like it or not, we don't know everything. We just don't. And and you find even with the younger generation, like they don't want to take the time to learn. They just feel like, okay, I know everything. And like you're saying, with looking at his success and where he was at in his in that point of life, at some point you have to be like, I need this mentorship. It's some keys he have that I have to get from him, if that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, and and long term, I had somebody else that mentored me and I eventually left that team and, and moved up, you know, to a, a top producer situation. So I eventually went solo, but he still gave me the keys to get where I needed to go in the beginning. And he wasn't wrong. And that's and, and I think young people and myself included, I would count myself when I was of that age group mm-hmm. that, you know, we have a tendency to just think we know everything and can do everything. And that's unfortunately, unless it's some sort of natural God given ability that's not the case. And even those with natural God-given ability still need coaching and still need help, whether it's a famous guitar player or basketball player or whatever. There's Everybody has a coach one way or the other, whether we like it or not. Right. And now, how do you balance um, being a coach and real estate and then like just finding time out for yourself? Well, I I think the fact that I work from home as a real estate agent, and of course, obviously we do the podcast and we're putting a course together and all of that. As long as you're happy and you love what you're doing, that's 95% of it right there is is the passion moves you and drives you. So it's not like it's a chore. Mm -hmm. I get paid to sell real estate and I love doing it. But at the same time, I never, I don't ever feel like it's a chore or it's a business and I'm able to adjust it and set it up as I see fit into my day. And I also appreciate the fact now that my, since my health is, you know, not as good as it used to be that I take time off. Mm-hmm. And let's be honest, sometimes I'll take a nap. You know, if I'm having a blood, a blood pressure issue or having a bad, what I call a bad health day, mm-hmm. then I'll shut everything down for an hour and go crawl into bed and take a nap. And I'm, And I understand that the world is not going to end if I don't answer the phone for an hour. Most of us, whether we like it or not, are just not that important. We're just not, you know. And you'll find out once you um, take time out for yourself, those present uh, issues will eventually solve themselves. You know what I mean? Like, as long as nobody was dying or something like that, you'll find out that it wasn't that pressing, that it's something that could have been waited to the next day as well. No, and you're absolutely right. And, and I do struggle with that, especially if I'm in the evening and I'm watching some TV or something like that, or I'm engaging with somebody else and a client reaches out to me, I may I may, you know, turn around and try to answer it. So I still need to work on that balance a little bit because I know intellectually it's not the end of the world. It is the evening time. I have a right to my own free time, you know, with my loved ones and all of that. But it's always a little bit difficult, especially when you've kind of got that hustler mentality or you want to solve the problem and you'd rather just go ahead and do it now. And the fact of the matter is that nine out of 10 times, unless you're a heart surgeon, you know, most <laughs> stuff can wait. It just can. Right. And what advice would you give to people that are thinking about joining the real estate industry? You don't, you know, they're, they're on the fence because they see what's on TV and it don't matches up what's really going on in the market right now. My opinion would be to always be yourself at the end of the day. I came in full time in 2007 in the middle of a recession, and I had previously been a chemist for nine years before that. Mm 
So I made a, you know, we, I took the time and made a serious jump because I was miserable as a chemist. So at 35, I went into real estate full-time and that was the first time I'd ever had a full-time job where that was my only job. Even yeah. when I was a chemist full-time, I always had some sort of side hustle, whether it was real estate or eBay or rental property or whatever. So my opinion is that most, and I kind of classify myself as the anti-real estate agent because a lot of real estate agents are very cookie cutter and they do the same thing over and over again. And there's no real, there's no real personality and there's no real passion. So my opinion would be, be yourself, regardless of anything else. You may not make everybody happy and you may not be everybody's cup of tea, but the people that love you will love you. And referrals are the lifeblood of what I do. And my folks know when they refer me, hey, Bob's a little different and he's going to tell you what you don't want to hear. And he's good. And we're going to walk in a house. And if he hates it, he's going to tell you why he hates it. And, you know, he doesn't do closing gifts and all of this other little assorted BS stuff that a lot of agents do. It's not going to happen. But my people absolutely love me. And there's a reason for that. Right. And so, Bob, we was talking before we started about the new course that your work that you're going to be launching any day. If you can provide some insight about the course. Of course. Uh, shameless plug here. <laughs> um, you can obviously uh, what Bob is the website that that will be on. You can also reach me at what Bob thinks on Facebook, which is a great spot. And the name of the course is want more, take more. And it's essentially the building block of how I transitioned from chemist to real estate and in turn had to do the same thing to rebuild my business when I had the two heart attacks and the quadruple bypass in 2018, because by the end of 2018, I was broke. I mean, I had cleaned out my bank account, my savings account, ran my credit cards up. I had was I was prepared to some extent, but I was certainly not prepared for a massive health crisis at 46. Now that may be naive, but also, you know, at, even at 51, it's fascinating how you never really feel old. You mm -hmm. know, like I didn't feel old at 35. I didn't feel old at 45. At 46, I never dreamed I would be having heart attacks and all of that. It just never occurred to me. I'm not, I'm not old. My father is old. Yeah. And even my father's at 81. And sometimes he, even he doesn't feel, yeah. you know, within his mind and spirit that he's 81. I mean, obviously the, the body doesn't move as well as it used to. Right. So the course is really about the persistent progress, doing the self-checks to monitor and move forward. The other two things that I talk a lot about because they're important to me is essentially walking, you know, working in the dark. In mm -hmm. other words, don't tell everybody your business. Keep your mouth shut. There's a lot of negative space out there. Find your tribe online. You know, when I when I was growing up, you didn't have that. That option didn't exist. You pretty much your people were your people in your town and that was about it. Now I can connect with millions of different people across this country that can encourage me or review what I'm doing if I'm working on something. Mm -hmm. And that's a beautiful thing to have that we didn't, we, that we used to not have and have available to us mm -hmm. because there is so much negative space. I mean, I can remember working at the grocery store and taking the job in the chemical plant and guys at the, at the grocery store telling me I was making a mistake. There's always going to be negative people running around. Mm -hmm. And you know, the other big thing that I talk about is imposter syndrome, because that hits me just like it hits everybody else. And I think imposter syndrome is a lot of reasons why people don't do what's in their heart and what their passion is, because they either A, assume they're not good enough, or B, they assume that they're going to fail. And I've been there. Even to this day, there's not at least a couple of times a month where things get quiet, because they're supposed to get quiet. We're getting ready to close properties. We've got appointments lined up. And there's just like a day or two where there's some quiet and there's some downtime. And invariably, I will feel like, well, that's it. The phone's never going to ring again. And I know that makes no sense. I can go back over 15 plus years and go, okay, Bob, you're being silly. <laughs> but I have to remind myself that that's what I'm feeling. And that's not necessarily the case. And I just have to look back at my past successes, you know, maybe even Lord knows, so I've been known if, if I'm having a, a an imposter day, I'll even listen to an old podcast that I did or some Les Brown, something to remind me of, okay, somebody apparently wanted my opinion and thought it was valuable. So maybe I need to quit doubting myself and keep moving forward. And I think that's important. 
And uh, you touched on two things, which I think is key that, you know, we need to have more discussions around is imposter syndrome and um, working in the dark. Um, because, you know, we have social media and, you know, people feel like, well, I'm, I'm, they look at the glitz and the glam, but don't realize that a lot of people are putting up a facade. It's not real just for Instagram, you know, and like you're saying, if, if you have the idea, you're good enough. You know what I mean? The universe and God will bring things to you to make you good enough. And you can always work on yourself. Yeah. And I think by working in the dark, you know, we never see the journey. We only see the outcome. Right. You know, Jeff Bezos was selling books on the Internet. And regardless of what anybody may think of him personally, the man did still did something that was pretty astounding and amazing. Mm -hmm. Robert Johnson, who, you know, used to own BET all those years, you know, slowly started buying those UFH channels and the local channels and then built up and built up and built up this massive network. And then at the top, at the top of the heap, sold all of it and made his millions along the way. We don't see that journey if we're not part of that inner circle. And it's easy to just think, OK, well, that person woke up and all of a sudden now they're important. And it's and we're all guilty of that at some extent, you know, and even I've done it. I'll see somebody will post like a, a makeup tutorial or something like that. And I'm like, well, that's just silly. They're doing a makeup tutorial, but I don't know what goes on in the background of that and, and how much effort went into that. And, and if they are being successful and, and making, you know, a contribution to society and make it and Lord knows making money at it and that's their job. What else would you want? You get to, you know, your job is your passion. That's, that's awesome. And, and, who is it for me, especially as a straight old white dude, to be like, well, that's just silly and, you know, which is my initial reaction. I'm not going to pretend right. that it's not. Why wouldn't it be? Yeah. So I have to catch myself and go, OK, well, I don't know what goes into all of what they're doing. And who cares what I think anyway? I'm Number one, I'm not their target audience. And number two, it's none of my business in the first place. Right, right. And so with the course, is it more, how's the course set up? Is it like act, interaction or is it self-toward or, you know? A it's, a, it's a book, it's a video course, and there's also a consultation element added to it also. So you can actually consult with me. I did the video course because I find for me personally, number one, typically I'm, you know, my hands are waving around and I'm doing my thing. I feel like I come across a little bit better and a little bit more passionate in a video format or I guess a pseudo live format than I do just writing a book. Okay. My uh, co-editor or my editor and co-author Nicole Banks with the niche work helped a lot with that aspect of terms of, again, it goes back to like we talked about, it's always good to have somebody that's accountable and can coach for you because she could take my written words and then make them better and fix my grammar and you know, try to enhance a little bit of what I'm trying to say. And I feel like I just come across better in a podcast format format or in a live format. I've done some public speaking and I just feel like I just come across better that way than just the standard book. So it's a combo. You can get the book, you can get the video course, you can, you know, let's be honest, you can buy the whole nine yards. And it's like anything else. I'm old school. So by all means, you can reach out to me and just at point blank ask me a question. Hey, this is what I got going on. I still answer the phone. So, you know, that in itself is weird, especially okay. in this day and age, <laughs> but it worked for me. It's who I am. And, and I would rather just answer the phone and answer your question. And I may not be what you need, but I would at least try to point you in the right direction. And let's be honest, not everybody is for everybody. I'm not a big fan of, let's say, Tony Robbins, but I love Les Brown. Something what whatever Les Brown came from, something in what he says spoke to me that perhaps a lot of other people didn't and it just fit. So everybody is not going to be in your wheelhouse and, and there's nothing wrong with that. And if people want to get in contact with you, I know you, um, what's, is, what's your email? If you could provide your email address. Of course, my email address is bobthompson0429 at gmail. That's the same email address I've had for a long time. And I'm quite honestly, I'm too lazy to change it. So I'm not going to. <laughs> the other thing they can do is they can actually call me directly or send me a text at 757-403-5401. And obviously I'm on the LinkedIn and the Facebook. I'm trying to get better at all of that. I'm old. 
So up until like a month ago, I didn't really have an Instagram thing. And I have been, I've had, you know, especially young people are like, yeah, what's your Instagram handle? I'm like, well, number one, I don't have one. And number two, I don't know how to set that up. So, so like Nicole has been, you know, that's again, that type of stuff to where she's helping me with stuff like that, or at least taking what I do and then can convert it over to the Instagram or make it where it's automatically, you know, on there, like on Fridays for real estate, I do what's known as the Wu Tang rant of the week. Okay. And that's and that actually came up out of I literally was doing a rant of the week and I had my Wu Tang shirt on because I'm an old school, you know, hip hop guy. Okay. Obviously okay. out of the 80s. So I'm public enemy, you know, later on Wu Tang and all of that. And somebody made a comment. He was like, number one, I loved it. Number two, you should wear the Wu Tang shirt every every single week. So I just started doing it. And now it goes to the Instagram and it runs around and does its little thing. I'm kind of hoping that the that Riza or Jizza give me a call and complain about it or try to take me to court because you know I I know the songs I can take over old dirty bastard spot and do the rapping for them. Not that anybody wants to see a 51 year old white dude up there rapping, but I mean I can I can do the part. So you know. Maybe that'll work out well for me either way, you know. I know, I know. If I see him in crossing, trust me, I'll tell him, hey, check this guy, Bob. I'm telling you, you got to hit him up. <laughs> Please do. I got no problems with that whatsoever. <laughs> well, thanks, Bob, for stopping past and telling us your story. And um appreciate your, you taking time out of your day just to sit down and, and talk with us. I'm always here to help. If you need anything, please let me know. Thank you for having me. And if, like I said, if you need anything in the future, I'm ready to go and here to help. All right, thank you. Thanks. Tune in to the Diva Hot Show. Motivate the globe. Think in your mouth and fall. Think to my head and tell. I let the whole world know. I let the whole world know.